have another great resource to share with you, and today, to help me do so, I have Harrison Klein coming to us all the way from Florida, and Harrison is a transformational leader, and he is also the brilliant man behind what I like to call the I Am Philosophy, and thank you so much, uh, Harrison, for uh, sharing another great resource with us. Awesome, Christina. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate that. Uh, I love your work, and it's really great. So here we are. Here That's we good. are indeed. <laughs> okay. Cool. So as I said, um, you are really the mastermind, the brilliant person behind the whole I Am philosophy. So maybe we should start there. There are people who've never heard of the I Am philosophy, and there are people also who've never heard of Harrison Klein. So if you could start there so that we can understand about your background and also what is this whole I am philosophy? Well, there's a lot to it, Tricia. Basically, the understanding of the I am is not my own, but it has come down through the ages, but it has not been used very, very well around too many people. Uh, really, the whole understanding of it is the fact that when Moses went to God, or whatever sages, most of the sages who have spoken directly to God, have asked him about his name, he always says, I am that I am. And I am, you know, I, the I am that I am basically refers to the fact that he is everything. I am that I am all things, or I am that I am love. Uh, those are interchangeable, basically. And um, the I am um, process is one in which it gives us our deepest sense of self. It allows us to access our deepest sense of self because when we say things about I am all day long, we're saying all kinds of things about I am. We're uh, identifying ourselves in multiple uh, roles. I am clumsy. I am happy. I am you know, depressed. I am sad. I am a great this, this, or that. And so I am, what we need to understand is that, you know, over the course of our lifetimes, uh, we get a sense of ourselves, and those are, and everything uh, that we feel about ourselves is a result of the words what we uh, the words we attach to the words I am, because I am is a direct connection to the unified field, or the field of all possibilities, and it is the signal to the unified field to actually take out what you have attached to the words I am to completion. So if you say I am bad at math, or you say I am a poor bicycle rider, that will be your experience. If you say, I'm a great husband or a great salesperson, okay. that will be your experience. So the I am is actually the gateway to experiencing what it is that you feel about yourself in the physical form. So it's really an amazing thing, and very few people have hooked onto it in the way that, uh, um, you know, it's recently become much more... Uh, prevalent in our society and movies and other things like that. There's been a movie I am, there's been a couple of books I am, and things of that nature. But, you know, a lot of it has come from the new realization of how that I am works. So it, that's the I am philosophy behind all I am. It's very interesting what you just said because you actually gave examples on both sides of the coin. <clears throat> uh, I am clumsy versus I'm a great salesperson. Those are two different uh, sets of beliefs, and of course that changes everything in the way we perceive ourselves, but also everything around us when we say I am clumsy, as opposed to I am a great salesperson, or I am fantastic, or I'm successful, and whatnot. It's interesting yeah. also that you talk about the fact that most of us are functioning without necessarily having a good understanding of the I am, and obviously of the power of the I am uh, statement. Yes, it is the, the I am statement and what is attached to that. Are, the, I, the words I am are the two most powerful words on the planet. They are the actual opening into the, into the uh, unified field. And they are our opening uh, with the unified source collectively or connectively to create experience. So this is a ma major understanding. It is, it is a big, huge, uh, a deep insight for anyone who is able to grasp and then to use the I am in an effective way. And that's part of what I teach and that's part of who I am. And it definitely differentiates me from all other teachers out there, most other teachers out there, simply because 
you know, what, what most people, when they say I am, and they want to use it for a positive effect, they try, they believe it's an affirmation, but it is not. It's a declaration of who we are, and the universe listens to declarations, which is very different than, 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 than affirmations, because an affirmation is I'm here, and I'm trying to get there. That's a very different <coughs> approach. Um, the I am says I'm already here. The word already is implied within that process. It also sets us into the here and now, which is where all the point of all power is in the here and now. There's never there's never any power in the future, never any power in the past. It's all those are all anticipations or memories, and they have nothing to do with what we can create. You can only create in the moment. So uh, we can we can project into the future, but it's not a creation. But when we say I am, you're immediately creating something in the very moment. Very different than most uh, people understand it. Okay, that that's really interesting. Now you have a, a new resource coming out called the I Am Effect. So if I can understand, what is the I Am Effect, and how does that relate to everything that we've been talking about up to now? The I Am Effect teaches very clearly what the I Am basically is. It is our deepest sense of self, and it is a state of mind. It's a state of beingness. And in this world, we are human beings, not human doings, not about doing anything. Everything that we desire comes to us by our beingness as opposed to all the things we do. We can get things through doing, through effort and struggle and pain and difficulty, but the I am is our state of mind. Now, the truth of the matter is that everything that society teaches us is against what is the truth. So, you know, the society teaches us to struggle and to pain, to be difficult about things. And the truth of the matter is all those things are quite easy when you understand the, the principle behind them. If you want money, it's quite easy to get money. It's all the emotional crap that goes around it that blocks us from having it. It is not the fact that we need to struggle for money. So I am puts us into a place where we create a state of mind. And a state of mind is the most powerful thing we can do to have anything on this planet for our experience. I am as your being, that's in your state of mind as your being. So that is the first cause of everything you experience in your life. And it's the primary cause of cause and effect of all the law, the primary law that, that, that runs the universe. So I have, a question. A, I have a question for you, Harrison. I mean, it's interesting you just said something which I think a lot of people are going to raise their eyebrows, and that's the fact that you said that of wanting money, we can all have money. It's not a problem. It's sort of all the emotional crap around it. I think that some people might say, well, wait a minute. Uh, I've said many times I am rich, I am uh, uh, abundant, um, and I still am short every month uh, and struggling to make ends meet. So I don't understand why I'm saying this. And then Harrison is saying that having money is not that difficult. That's a very different experience from the one that I'm living right now. Yes. What would you say to somebody who, who's thought that way or who said okay. that? We, we, now, here's the major principle behind all this, that we get in this world what we are and not what we want. Everything that we have is something that we are. So the reason we may not get things that we desire, and even though we say I am rich or I am abundant and all that kind of stuff, is that all we can experience are vibrational matches to what we put out. So the I am is a particular vibration. We create the vibration. That's how why it's the, the, the uh, connection to the unified field. So when we vibrate at a certain level, the only thing that can happen is that the universe gives us back a matching vibration. There is no external experience out there. It's really the world is not out there. It's in here. And it, the world is coming from us. We're not coming to the world. And that's a huge difference in the understanding of things. Everything that you experience, the entire universe is in here. It's inside of you. So, and that is us and everything. There's only one mind out here. But, you know, we're experiencing it as different experiences. But everything is within us. There's nothing that isn't in, within us in the same way that a hologram has every little piece of information in the smallest uh, micro second of a, of a hologram or micro space of a hologram has the same... Uh, information is all infinity. So all infinity is the same at the at the, the, the smallest level as to the highest level. So there's no difference. It contains all the same information. So in the I am process here, when we um, when we vibrate in a particular way, and then we you know we change our minds 
So we can say, I am rich, I am rich or I am abundant continuously. But if we then take a look at our bills and we see uh, that, that we think that there's a, a you know, a lack or, or a lack of amount in their, in your bank account, you say to yourself, you know, oh, that's bullshit. Or you say that, uh, I don't mean to, <laughs> uh, sorry about saying the word <laughs> yes, but uh, if you say to yourself, you know, that's not true, or I'm trying to create something, or you contradict it, the mind can, you know, we switch, our, we have monkey minds. We, we, we change our minds continuously about a lot of things. Yes. So what happens is we can say I am rich 25 times, but if we say 500 times, can't make my bills or I'm struggling or I'm in pain, you know, you're washing out the I am. Mm -hmm. The whole principle, yes, it's exactly that. It's all a balancing act. So if you, you know, if you say an I am and you stick with it, in other words, you don't change your mind or contradict your mind, okay, then you experience that. Actually, what you are experiencing the moment you say an I am is that you are experiencing if you say, I am rich, at that moment, you are experiencing wealth. And you can hold that vision as long as you don't contradict it. You will continue, the universe will form itself around you to give you wealth. If you do contradict it, if 20 minutes later you're looking at your bank statement and you're saying, oh, my God, I don't have enough. If I'm not really abundant, you know, you're not, it washes it out. So but, but, but that this is not that, easy. No, that's exactly what I was going to say. Correct. That might not be easy. It's not hard. I guess, again, easy and hard are value judgments. And what happens is somebody thinks something is easy, it's easy for them. Somebody thinks it's hard, it's hard for them. So it's really a matter of what you tell yourself because two people of equal strength can walk into a room and their assignment both is to lift 50 pounds. One person says, oh, that's hard. It's going to be hard for him. The other person says, that's easy. It's going to be easy for them. It's your attitude toward how that works that creates the reality of the situation or the experience of that situation. Mm -hmm. Experience is not reality, but uh, I just wanted to you know, kind of clarify that. So money, if you take the emotional charge off of it, whenever you put an emotional charge on something, you have to clarify or you have to go through the emotional charge in order to experience the experience. If you remove the emotional charge, it becomes very easy. There's a flow, okay? So understand that what the word um, wealth means mm -hmm. is that, for example, we're talking about money, mm -hmm. so let's talk about the word wealth. Okay, okay. And, and wealth in its, in its entomology, if you trace back the origins of the word wealth, the English portion of that comes from the word well-being. Well However, the Greek version that created the word wealth comes from the word flow in Greek. So it's all about flow. It's not about, it's not about having anything. It's about well-being and flow. And as you're in flow, everything loves to flow. Conversation loves to flow. Uh, relationships love to flow. Money loves to flow. So as long as you're in flow, you have no problem. It's only when you come out of flow that, that you, you come out that you have problems. And the way you come out of flow is by, by creating emotional charges to things. The moment you create an emotional charge, you actually are stopping the flow. Well, that's still interesting. And, 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 and again, uh, perhaps it's just me, but I think that people might think, okay, well, emotional charge, how do I remove emotional charges from the fact that I can't pay my bills? Um, how can you give us actionable steps or actionable uh, items that we can integrate to implement these I am statements, but not only hold that, you know, or, or, or state an I am statement, but actually stay in that vibrational state. As you use the great example, I am rich, you say it, you feel abundant at that moment, 20 minutes later, you look at your bank account, or in the sense, you know, here with small business owners, you may be looking at your month thinking, oh, my gosh, I don't have enough clients. I need to find new clients. Where do I find clients? How do I find clients? I need new clients. So how can you help us really integrate these principles? Well, it's, it's simply a matter of understanding. Understanding negates emotional charge. It negates a whole bunch of things. If you understand the principles behind things, you understand how things work, you're not going to use it incorrectly. Okay, so if you understand that, 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 you know, an I am creates an immediate moment of uh, whatever it is you attach mm -hmm. to your words, I am, yeah. you can stay there. So when, you, so when something comes in that, that is anti what you have said, you simply bring yourself back to the statement. 
to the, you bring yourself back to the declaration. And gently, not admonishing yourself, not criticizing okay. yourself, all that stuff. So it's a matter, and, and you take the emotional charge off of it. So you just say, hey, you know, my bank account may not be, uh, may, may not be up to snuff right now, or, it, you know, but that is, in, in truth, if you understand how things work, that's an illusion because it's coming from you. So now what you want to do is you want to in, in infuse that illusion with your wealth. You know, so you want to have the image of your wealth, and that's how you do it. So you don't pay attention to what the physical reality is, because that's just a, uh, that is just your past thoughts mm-hmm. manifesting into a physical mm-hmm. space. So you want to take your current thoughts to manifest a new reality, and so that's how it works. There, there's a lot of different ways and steps and sequences to do that if you want to, but I am is the most powerful but to create the state of mind. And when that's the fast way. The slow way is to visualize something and to struggle and to think and to and to go through tactics and strategies and all that stuff. You know, when you're in a state of mind of wealth, you don't even think about money because you're already wealthy. So things start coming to you that are regarding that situation. If you're in a state of mind about being wealth, you start to experience the physical sensations of having wealth. And there is a corresponding physical sensation to everything that you I am. So if you say, I'm a celebrity, like a guy who has a movie star, he has a particular kind of corresponding uh, um, statement, internal statement, I am, and he has a particular corresponding physical sensation of that. Millionaires have a corresponding physical sensation of being a millionaire. Engineers have a corresponding physical sensation of being engineers. Poor people have a corresponding physical sensation of being poor. Okay, so we start to create through our I am the physical sensation. And as we tap into those physical sensations, we can hold that that vision, that that uh, um, declaration high in our thoughts, high in our perception, and then we don't deviate from that. We don't contradict it. We don't deviate. We ignore or we de- or, or we shoot out all the other statements that contradict that. We don't allow in the thoughts that contradict that. And so, universe then, by law, the law of cause and effect, which is the law that uh, which is the the, the sequel and principles that starts things coming to us, comes from the I am. So the I am comes from the law of cause and effect comes from the I am. It creates your thoughts, it creates your your speech, it creates your um, actions, and it creates your experience and your mm-hmm. results. Okay, so, so if I understand correctly, and I'm, I'm, let me summarize this, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, let's let's again go with the sort of rich because it's it's a very popular topic. We all want to be rich, most of us do anyways. And so if you state I am abundant, I am wealthy, I am rich, and you feel abundant and rich and wealthy at the moment at which you're making these statements, 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, two hours, five hours later, something comes up in the, your day that may make you question that, as opposed to you talk about visualization. Some people tell you, well, start visualization or start visualizing yourself, you know, in, in, on your yacht or whatnot. What you're saying is when we have that sense of, oh, doubt, is to go back to I am rich, I am wealthy, I am abundant. Bring yourself back to that situation, yes. But the easiest and fastest way to do that is bring yourself back to the statement, look inside of yourself for the corresponding physical sensation of that I am, okay? And then that keeps that takes you right back to the moment of where you are, your wealth. Okay. Now, there's a great there's a, there's another step that's also very strong with that. You want to once you have the physical sensation and the visual. Now, the I am creates a visual. It creates a visual of you in that situation. I am wealth, whatever you define that as. Okay. It creates a visual. It also creates a physical sensation. So once you find the physical sensation through the statement or through the declaration, and you want to go back to that, you also want to rest in it. So you want to be relaxed in it. So you're not fighting it. There's no tension inside of yourself. So you want to rest in the visual. And then the universe starts to move its energy around you in order to bring that back to you. Because that's the vibrational match. Mm, you, and we do that with everything. We do that from, we do that with all kinds of negative things. We never question when we say I am sad or I am broke or I am or I am you know uh, um, you know uh, happy or whatever the case may be. We don't question it once we when we once we say that. But when we when we come to a thing like wealth, because there's such an emotional charge on that, we start to question it. See, and that's what takes us out of it. Mm, 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so the so the more doubt we have and the more emotional charge we put on, the the less we experience what it is we want. Okay. okay? Interesting. So, so it's yeah. a very simple process, and it is the simplest of process processes. You know, the universe is not the universe in itself is complex because it's infinite intelligence, but the way that that it has been structured in in um, relationship to human beings is that it's very simple. It's not trying to hide anything. It gives you a simple tool, and it, it performs each time and every time. There's no deviation from these things, but they're universal laws. You know? So when we start to deviate, once we start to not pay attention to universal laws, when we don't use them for our benefit, you know, what happens is we get the opposite, right? Um, so that's the situation. And if we are unavailable to access our internal um, connection to the uh, things that we understand, uh, you know, that is when we go numb, when we go angry, when we go frustrated, when we go disappointed, it, it doesn't allow that flow, it stops that flow, because it, it, because those are not, those are things that come from our thoughts, okay, okay? And, uh, and it's a different situation, we put emotion on those things. When we put no emotion on them, when you just say, I am well, and you create a vision of you as, as wealthy, whatever you define as a wealthy state, luxurious, happy, you know, as people of substance, uh, luxury experiences, hotels, cars, whatever it is you may want. You know, once you have that, if you, you know, it starts to bring that to you. Understand that we are manifesting every moment. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, every single moment of, of every instant of our lives, we are manifesting something. And what that is, is that if you really come down to it, is our attention is placed on something which compresses energy and spits it into the physical world. Now, attention is your life force. Intention is the way you shape the energy of your life force. So you want to intend to be wealthy, okay? You want to place your attention on it because the word manifestation, if you really boil down to it, this is so simple and so profound. The word manifestation means to invest attention into Okay. So the, more you, so the more you look at something internally, the closer you bring it to your physical experience. Okay? And the I am is looking at it smack dab in front of your eyes. Okay, and that's what you just explained. Excellent. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that people must be quite excited to know more about the I am effect. And I'm going to have a link uh, in the show notes. But I think what I'm excited in sort of doing here to close this segment is perhaps if you could share some of the success stories. So perhaps some individuals or entrepreneurs who come to you okay. with needs to change yeah. their, oh, nope, need is not a good word, need is not a good word, with the desire, desire to change yeah. their lives or improve their lives. Yeah. If you could give me a few examples, that would be great. Hey, just last week, you know, I teach classes. I teach, uh, I teach uh, classes uh, of different levels of understanding. I teach a uh, alignment factor, which is aligning your conscious, subconscious, and superconscious so that you can be in that flow, okay? I teach a effortless abundance class, which is about getting rich, which is about having anything that you want effortlessly. I teach a mastery class also. Now, I, was, I have an effortless abundance class that, I, that I'm in the ninth segment, ninth week of, actually last week, it was the eighth week. In the eighth week of that class, and I do it once a week for three hours in each that class, you know, the first person in that class manifested a $30,000 check instantly out of nowhere from, like, you know, nothing. So I've had people manifest $250,000 checks, all kinds of different things. Now, it looks like it's accidental. It looks like it's out of nowhere, but it really is a result of the way we're vibrating. It is a result of the way that we I am. It's a result of the energy understandings of the universe and the laws of the universe based on, you know, uh, um, absorbing those laws, understanding that we get what we are and not what we want. So no matter how much struggle we put into something, we don't get what it is we desire. We get it when we start to, when we create our uh, beingness around something, and the beingness starts with the I am. That, that powerful or is, what? I'm sorry. That, uh, it left me speechless. Uh, that is extraordinarily powerful. I mean, thirty thousand dollars is is a lot to manifest, seemingly out of nowhere. But the two hundred and fifty thousand is jaw dropping. Sure. Uh, yeah, we've had people heal that were in hospital beds for um, two years straight 
uh, not being able to even sit up because all the tendons in their body had been ruptured. Uh, we've had people and, and you know, for five weeks, not only did they sit up, they were in a wheelchair, and the fifth or sixth week afterwards, they were walking. Not as good as you or I, but they were walking with a cane, but they were, but they, before that, couldn't walk. They were two years flat on their back, and then in, in, in a matter of just a few weeks, you know, they stood up and they walked. They went through miraculous healings. Okay, and that's not the only thing. Okay. Just like that. I don't want to bore you with all of them. And some of them are really fabulously miraculous in nature, but they're not really miracles. They're, they're just the use of the laws of, uh, of the universe. Of the universe. You know? And when you know the laws of the universe, when you know the laws of the universe, you can apply them to our very. There's nothing you can't do because we are infinite, eternal beings made in the shape and likeness of, you know, source. And we have all the same powers as source in the same way that a ray of light has all the same powers of the sun. Well, uh, okay, it's always just, attacked. I, I'm sorry, but this is just, it's making me shake my head. I mean, the money is one thing, but people sick for two years and within a matter of a few weeks being able to, I mean, change our lives. I mean, we say, you know, health is everything. Health is wealth and everything else. And, for, you know, we, you really realize that when you can't use your body. And, and, and that last example is, is even more draw-dropping than the $250,000. Yeah, well, I mean, those things happen. I mean, once you understand how the universe works, I, I mean, you, uh, most of us will acknowledge that there are that there are forces in invisible world that we don't we're not aware of in our everyday uh, in our everyday lives. There are forces of clairvoyance, of telepathy, of you know that there are people out there who can do things that we may not be able to do because we don't have that vibrational. Extent. All we're doing is tapping you into higher vibrations to understand more so that you can do whatever it is. Jesus created all kinds of miracles, right? Or at least that's so good, so, so we're told. And what he said was, you, to his disciples, you will do all this and more. So it's just a matter of understanding how all that works. And the moment you understand how a motor works, you can run a car. You know, once you understand. Or you a plane. Create, or whatever they do, or get rich. <laughs> Or be, or be happy, or get sexy, or whatever it is you may want to play with. You know? Or all three together, be happy, get, right. get rich, and get sexy. Are you talking about language? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Harrison, I'm going to, as I said earlier, I'm going to have some information on, in the show notes because I'm pretty sure that by now people are like, whoa, I want to know more. And uh, thank you so much for being on the segment. I know that there's a lot of great things happening for us in the next few weeks, but this was really phenomenal. Uh, very much an eye-opener for me, and I'm very much sure that for all of the listeners and the watchers. Thank you so very much, Harrison. I'll tell you, Chris, yeah. Thank you for having me.